Yes, your mother is an extraordinary judge of comedic talent. <laughs> Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Field. On the program today, we have Devin Minima. He is the uh, candidate for Solana County uh, Fourth District Board of Supervisors and currently a city council member in Dixon. Welcome to the show, Devin. We have John Cameron, <coughs> a development officer at the Pacific Legal Foundation and the author of Rekill, Rewire, and the soon to be published Aristocracy. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Another week, another Trump, Trump cabinet member fired. Rex Tillerson is out at state. Pompeo has moved from uh, CIA to state. And uh, Gina Haspel, the torturer in chief from the Bush administration, is now the head of CIA. I guess, CIA. I guess that's appropriate, right, uh, right, Devin? Well, yeah, it is absolutely unbelievable uh, that Haspel is now going to be in charge of the CIA. Uh, I do think that this is a, if there's a silver lining, it's the fact that Pompeo will be out of the CIA position and into uh, the State Department, where I think he can do less damage. Um, but I think the real tragedy here is that Tillerson was one of the last moderating forces for the Trump administration. And so with all of the defections, I, I really do wonder where things are going to go from this point for the administration, um, considering that it, the, the members of the cabinet are trending more and more to the right. And it's <coughs> getting a little disconcerting. I'm not sure it's more and more to the, well, it's more, I guess you'd call it right, but it's also more and more to the, uh, the populist America first nativist yeah. uh, wing of the uh, of the party it seems like absolutely yeah and it, it, it really is sad because we're looking at you know the the death of a, a, a tradition uh, for Republicans a, a conservative tradition that really placed uh, understanding your rights and the Constitution first and and uh, as the Trump administration goes further and further into its its term um, we're seeing more and more conservatives lose sight of that, lose sight of the actual principles that the party was founded on and, and the ideals that we held for at least the last, you know, 100 years or 60 years. <laughs> right. Now, you're, you're running, obviously, in a, in a nonpartisan race, but I'm assuming that you consider yourself a, a uh, libertarian, liberty caucus type Republican? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I worked for, I worked for a... a, a political action committee, and I came up through Young Americans for Liberty. Uh, I worked for a political action committee that uh, was supporting Rand Paul, and uh, I've always been a big Rand Paul supporter and a Ron Paul supporter before that. He <coughs> got me in politics. Okay, great. So. Uh, the, the interesting thing uh, in, in all of the uh, changes in the Trump administration is it's really not that surprising, because after all, this was the guy who made his name in reality TV by saying, you're fired. And now he's doing Careful exactly the same. Right? <laughs> well, there are there no. I, 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 the drama is amazing, and you know there are some some benefits to Tillerson being out. I mean, let's let's look on the bright side. Pompeo, Pompeo being in, I don't know, but could could anybody really do more damage uh, as uh, as head of state than than Hillary did running, um, you know, top secret information on a server out of her house uh, and. And you know, texting and emailing from a personal phone, putting you know there there's a lot of deep state stuff going on out of the State Department, yeah. um, and mm -hmm. I I would think that you know hopefully Pompeo's uh, a little bit uh, uh, more security oriented and and uh, all the rest of that. But I, I also think that if he did the same thing, he'd go to prison. Um, you know, Absolutely. but that, we've learned that lesson. But the, what really scares me is the CIA has been a <coughs> law unto itself. And to have someone who's, uh, you know, was a torture proponent, and I, you know, conservatives are, are, you know, they get mad at the at the the so-called liberals who are really labor or socialists, for for saying that they'll, you know, achieve their mission at any price, but they're completely okay with uh, medieval torture of people to achieve their mission. So I, I think it's, you know, hypocrisy at the highest level. In Philadelphia, the uh, city uh, council has, at their infinite wisdom, decided to increase the tax on soda pop by roughly 50%. A, a can of Coke or a liter of Coke going up by about 50%. Same way with 7-Up and <coughs> the rest of the, uh, of the soft drink uh, world. Uh, what's the real world effect of that going to be, John? Well, it's uh, already showing a couple of effects. Uh, there is, um, um, again, not scientific studies, but... Um, Apparently, liquor sales are, are going up. So people um, are having rum with their Coke. Um, yes, yes. And then, um, yes, they are. 
and enjoying it more thoroughly than ever before. They don't care about being overweight and having diabetes after they've had a few shots of rum with their Coke. The other thing is, is that this is a Philadelphia, this is a city tax. It might be a county, I'm not sure, but it's not a state tax. So what that means, if you're running a uh, fast food, let's say you're a uh, marginal mom and pop shop uh, trying to make your way and grow and support your kids and send them off to college and and most of your profit is in uh, your soft drinks. You know, the markup on them is about the same as liquor at a bar, maybe even more. Mm -hmm. um, and all of a sudden, <clears throat> instead of having to charge, you know, uh, if you charge $2 for this drink, then uh, it's now three because of a buck worth of tax. People are gonna go buy the product that allowed you to have a bottom line um, a block away from somebody who's not in Philadelphia. And so it, like any, any time when you try to uh, put in regressive taxes to force people to change behavior, although supposedly uh, higher cigarette taxes have uh, lowered you know, use of cigarettes, but I see an awful lot of poor people dropping their $10.12 a pack down in the liquor store. Well, you know, there probably will be a law to follow up on that. It'll be a law that says that if you cross the city uh, city line and uh, have a have a coke and then cross back into Philadelphia with your belly full of coke you'll be uh, guilty of uh, transporting uh, illicit goods mm -hmm. smuggling yeah smuggling. yeah and then uh, across uh, city lines yeah. uh, they probably can't make it a felony but uh, yeah. it was across state lines yeah. Yeah. so uh, I don't know if does Philly I don't know the geography for that area you know, if you moved into another state and had a Coke and came back, the Interstate Commerce Commission can tell. Anyway, it's crazy. Uh, this kind of thing hardly ever works. Um, you know, the, the, the crazy thing is what New York tried actually has some logic to it, and even it didn't work. I mean, people will drink whatever you put in front of them or eat whatever you put in front of them. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you give somebody a huge, like, 48-ounce drink, they'll drink it. If you give them 12 ounces, they won't. But it, it's still, you know, this is America. This is the, a nation that was founded on individual choice and liberty. This is not the nanny state, uh, no matter how hard they're trying to make it be. And, and I think, you know, uh, children who could read in school and parents who could read to them when they came home, i.e. not products of the, the government school system, would make more rational choices. Well, and, and the libertarian <coughs> argument for anything like this is, is mm. very simple. Yeah. I don't drink soda, hardly at all. Mm. And the reason I don't drink soda is because the whites, sugar, flour, mm. uh, you know, pro highly processed foods, mm. not good exactly. for you. Yeah. Just simply, you know, not very yeah. good for you. They're fattening, yeah. they, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, empty calories, all the rest. And, uh, and make you want you to save make those calories hungry, make, for good liquor. Yeah, absolutely, make yeah. you hungry for, you know, for, uh, for things that you probably shouldn't eat as well. So. But, but the libertarian principle is, since I believe that, I'm going to try to persuade you, John, to quit drinking so darn much Mountain Dew. I'm not going to pass to a law. <laughs> you think I could be this tired after I'm not a six-pack of Mountain Dew? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pass a law that says you, gotta, you, know, you have to you know, pay 50% more or uh, even worse, can't drink Mountain Dew because it's you know, got too much caffeine in it or something. Mm -hmm. That's well, persuasion, you know. Yeah. That persuasion, persuasion versus coercion. Persuasion. Coercion yeah. uh, is, you know, we don't need it in a, in a free society. But persuasion, the more persuasion, the better. Particularly well, there, for there, there is a version of persuasion that I find particularly abhorrent in, in the nanny state of California, and that's the that every third commercial um, I hear on the radio during drive time is by some kind of state agency trying to convince me that some kind of behavior is horrible, and that's paid for by my tax dollars. So. Well, particularly and, egregious yeah. in that respect are the anti-vaping commercials. Yeah. Okay. Vaping is, in fact, a lot healthier than smoking cigarettes. Absolutely. Or smoking anything anything else. Yeah. Uh, it's not yeah. going to hurt you. It that's, doesn't have the tar and nicotine I'd like and all to talk rest. about one of our cases that, that Pacific Legal Foundation is, is pursuing we're actually bringing three different vaping cases simultaneously in, in three different jurisdictions in this country to, to stop some ab abhorrent abuses of the Constitution. And if we have time a little bit later, I'd like Shoot to talk it. about Shoot, that. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just, so, you know, give us the, uh, the, the, you know, the, uh, the, the high-altitude overview. Well, the high-altitude overview is since there's three cases, of course, I can't remember the names of the three cases, so we'll just talk about our vaping cases. What we decided to do, and not me, our legal geniuses, of which we have many, was to attack a particularly egregious constitutional abuse 
Um, at the FDA, only a presidentially appointed officer, somebody who's been vetted and, and, uh, and, and faces accountability for their actions is allowed to make rules. Mm -hmm. So the, one of the people in the FDA who was vetted and allowed to make rules delegated their rulemaking power illegally to a career bureaucrat who passed 200 rules on her own that have the weight <coughs> of law, i.e. criminal penalties, jail time, uh, fines, all the rest of that. And one of the industries they targeted was the vaping industry. They now um, regulate vaping as if it were a tobacco product, as if it was a medical device manufacturer and a tobacco product. So um, anytime one of these little mom and pop shops wants to take one of their vaping things and create a new flavor so that you can uh, you know, have nicotine with none of the tar and all the rest of that and you got some flavor to add to it, or some people are just like, vaping with just flavor. They have to spend literally over $100,000, I think the average is $125,000, to ask the FDA's permission to do this. And... To change it from strawberry flavor to grape flavor. Well, even, you know, strawberry to ultra wow. strawberry. Or yeah. to change the, the uh, one little part of this vape, vaping mechanism from, you know, a three-inch cylinder to, in essence, a radiator to cool the smoke down, whatever. So... Mm -hmm. um, that means that all these little mom and pop organizations, and many of them are started by people who were in essence dying of health related issues, who wanted to offer a safer alternative to people. Than camels. Mm -hmm. than, than, well, we can't really, I guess we can spell out camels. Allah, remember the day. No, I don't smoke anymore. So um, what we've done is think about this. If there is one FDA employee who has been delegated the power, and she has created 200 regulations or rules that have the power of the weight of law, how many other career bureaucrats in other agencies are doing exactly the same thing and saddling the, the United States of America with billions of dollars worth of unnecessary cost and regulation? And what makes this particularly heinous, and again, this is a little more detail that I want to go into, is because the FDA is involved, the people at these shops can't even pass along information that is common knowledge, that is in the body of knowledge, that is published on websites. They have to prove that whatever they statement they make is true before they can make it. Free speech doesn't apply. Free speech here. is out the window, yeah. due process. So what uh, Pacific Legal Foundation has done in its brilliance has never been done before, is they've gotten three different clients, three different va vaping uh, uh, businesses in three different jurisdictions and simultaneously filed suit against this law. So what that means is there's a very good chance to fast track this to some place where it'll get changed. And, and, it, and it's a horror. And this is just one of the tiny horrors of the oppressive administrative state that people who have regular jobs don't ever see. Even worse than the soda tag. Okay. The border wall. Uh, according to, uh, I think a, tw a tweet from Trump, I'm not sure, but uh, according to the administration, <laughs> the border wall will pay for itself. <laughs> uh, well, it's, you know, this is based on, on, on information from the uh, Center for Immigration Study, mm -hmm. Studies. And if you know anything about the Center for Immigration Studies, you'll know that it's a nativist, loudmouthed, totally wrong. Uh, pressure group that's trying to uh, basically uh, prevent any immigration whatsoever to the United States. They say it'll cost 18 billion. How much will it actually cost, Evan? Well, it could be multiple factors times that. I mean, the, the Center for Immigration Studies really, even that name is, is so misleading. They are an advocacy group first and foremost. Uh, they're not there to come up with unbiased information. Um, the the uh, Center for Immigration Studies was quoting an $18 billion uh, price tag for the wall, <coughs> and of course not including maintenance long term. $18 billion is being extremely optimistic on the amount of, or on the cost of labor and materials. Uh, and so that, that number is just completely ridiculous what they came up with. Uh, and of course it does not include the long term maintenance of infrastructure. And I can say mm -hmm. from someone, uh, you know, being a city councilman that even the smallest bit of infrastructure, you can you can never <laughs> f 
fully expect how much it's going to cost to maintain it over time. Potholes are expensive. The Ooh, estimate is that it. it's going to be four, <laughs> almost $5 billion a year. Well, there, there, is a, it. there is a... And that the $18 billion is wrong. It's going to be closer to $28 billion to build in the first place. Well, there is a... And it's going to cost another half billion dollars a year for, uh, for guards. Go I, ahead. I want to help the government save money. So what they do is they use undocumented illegal laborers to work <laughs> on the law and maintenance, just like, you know, landscape and roofing and concrete yeah. and everything else. And, you know, what they get is they, the government trucks. They could even use the ICE trucks to go pick them up yeah. at, at, um, um, at, at Home Depot and Lowe's yeah. and all those places and bring them. And buy cheaper, you don't think that's and buy cheaper concrete from Semex. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, since it's, people are going to be drilling holes in it, blowing it up, climbing over it, tunneling under it, and everything else. You might as well make it cheap because it's going to come down in about a week. <laughs> well, and since the federal government's doing it, why don't we go ahead and suspend all the OSHA rules that are going to be well, there are. The there are going to, well, course. I mean, the state of California, well, of course, is they're bringing... suspending a lot of the uh, uh, environmental rules. That's well, already. Well, except the state of California is suing under environmental grounds to prevent the wall from doing it. If, if that's the case, then can we use that same kind of lawsuit against the state of California when they uh, suspend environmental rules to throw up one of these palaces for their employees to live in? Can we, is not what's good for the goose good for the gander? Yes, for no? me. Yeah. Or should we even take a look at Jerry Brown's new ranch out in Calusa and the, how the uh, road got paved when the rest of the county's still crumbling? <laughs> you mean <laughs> Moonbeam might have, might have taken advantage of his position as governor? Oh, I know, it's shocking. Yeah. It, it really is. I'm, I'm, Cast. I'm choked I'm up. Literally. I'm surprised there's drinking going on in this bar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so the border wall won't pay for itself. Well, that's interesting. Uh, the House Intelligence Committee says uh, that they're, well, first of all, the House Intelligence Committee has been con con conducting a, uh, a parallel investigation into the allegations of uh, conspiracy or collusion between the Trump uh, campaign and the later administration <coughs> and Russia. Uh, in conjunction with uh, the, uh, the Mueller uh, Independent Counsel investigation. But the House has already come up with their conclusion. They have yeah. said that there is no Trump-Russia collusion. Uh, do, you believe, do, you, do you believe them, John? Well, yes, because the problem with cell phone coverage, they could never... Um, cell phone they coverage? Could, yeah, they could never get the call through because of bad cell phone. No, I, of course there's no collusion. These The people on both sides are clowns. I mean... Uh, you know, all the people in the Trump administration did was try to get, um, you know, I mean, the, the CIA. They tried to get, they tried to get some dirt on Hillary, just like, you know, Hillary was publicizing that there was dirt on Trump colluding with Russia. Um, these are, are clowns on the left, clowns on the right, and 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 there's no collusion. These people couldn't keep a secret if their life depended on it. I mean, you've seen the quality of people on the periphery of the Trump administration. You've seen the, well, for God's sakes, Pompeo's now is now the Secretary of State. I mean, and Gina, uh, the, the <coughs> crusher uh, Haspel is, is head of the CIA. I mean, <laughs> come on. And, uh, Paul, and but, Paul Manafort was the head of the uh, campaign for a while, and he's uh, been pointed out, been, been legitimately uh, called out as a, you know, a common uh, fraudster. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. Well, no, there's, there, you know, the, what people need to, need to realize, and unfortunately, you know, people are, are willing to give up more and more for the sake of security and sake of security and safety, and it's and it's a, and it's a hollow building. Is that that anybody who rises to to high levels in government is a sociopath? Um, that it is all about uh, favoritism. You know, it's all about um, doing favors for either the big government unions or the or the defense contractors, or the oil company, or all the rest of that. But for some reason, despite all the evidence over and over and over again, they, they choose to believe one side or the other. Present company accepted. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> well, well, I mean, there, um, there, there are, if, if, if uh, you file the serial numbers off of the questions and gave people a, a questionnaire about what their political views are and didn't let them know, you know, left or right, Republican or Democrat, 60 plus percent of the people in this country land pretty much in the middle of libertarian. Well, yeah, I mean, if you actually even use, uh, Gallup did some polling back in, I think it was 2016, which came yeah, up right. with the uh, information that something like, uh, I'm trying to remember the numbers now, something like tw um, 
28 percent of the population considers themselves libertarian, yeah. broadly, broadly defined. Mm -hmm. uh, about uh, 25 percent, something like that, conservative. About 18 percent. I'm, I'm getting the numbers wrong, but these yeah. are ballpark. About 18 percent liberal and about 15 percent populist. Mm -hmm. So you can combine conservative and libertarian, and you've got a majority mm -hmm. uh, with no mm -hmm. question whatsoever. And uh, really, you've got a, uh, you know, you. You've, you've got a situation where if you believe that Republicans are the conservative party and if you believe that liberals are the progressive or liberal party uh, and if you believe that the libertarians are the libertarian party, yeah. which we are, uh, the uh, the balance of power, there's something wrong because we've got a, you know, a hundred and some uh, uh, elected officials across the country and Democrats and Republicans have all the rest. But yeah. it's because they have been able to set up a duopoly uh, basically controlling the, the electoral rules mm -hmm. from the exactly. local level to the state level to the federal level. Well, there is one thing, there's one thing that's going to tilt the playing field, it's, and it's not, I wish it was, uh, a, uh, and for some reason I always blank out on the first one, there's a, there's a wonderful case uh, that the Supreme Court heard that uh, should cripple the socialist's ability uh, to finance local elections, which should mm -hmm. free up um, and you should remember the name of it. It's V. Ask Me. It starts with a J. Uh, it'll come back to me right after you turn your TVs off tonight, audience. And then, um, but anyway, there are there is there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, so yeah. Trump, Trump, uh, the Trump uh, Russia collusion. You know, the, the House Intelligence Committee says no collusion. Mueller obviously is going to say something different. He may not say collusion, but he'll certainly be able to find something mm. uh, that would fall under the rubric <coughs> of obstruction of justice. Because mm, yeah. with obstruction of justice, you don't need to have any underlying crime at all. Just no, you know, uh, interfere with the interfere with the investigation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all of the indictments that uh, Mueller has made so far have been essentially for you know petty crimes like like. Uh, uh, income tax mm -hmm. and, and uh, banking violations, mm -hmm. that sort of thing, or lying to the FBI. Yeah. I well, mean, the well, FBI can lie to you, you can't lie to the FBI. I exactly. have a problem with that, but that's the, so that's the way it is, and it's a felony. Wait, wait, so wait. those are, the, those are, the, uh, those are the, the uh, charges so far. The question I have is Mueller is, is uh, arresting people as, for being liars. Uh, he's not going to have very credible witnesses that uh, that uh, you know on, on the collusion charge, but he may be able to make a. a uh, well, you know, it depends on on if he convinces them to lie, which is what the government yeah. does. You know, turn state's evidence yeah. and and say this, mm -hmm. and we'll let you walk. But he's already know? convicted them of lying. They're not going to be very credible in front of a jury. They're going to give a lesser sentence. Yeah. Well, no, but plead. so it, the credibility is not going to be very. Hold high. on, didn't right. didn't didn't um, what's her name, Hillary? Didn't she lie? A whole bunch, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. repeatedly yeah. to the FBI yeah. and, and the House and. Well, there ought to be a law, yeah. and uh, there ought to be a law against lying to the. Oh, we have a law against lying to the FBI. Yeah. Uh, one of the most, the, I think, probably other than judicial appointments, one of the best things the Trump administration has done is they have said, in the regulatory sphere, for every new regulation that's enacted, we need to repeal two, old. Uh, ineffectual bad regulations. Yes. That's a great idea. Exactly. And it's been a very, very effective way of rolling back, back a, a whole lot of the, the regulatory overlay in the, in the country. Of course, it's all executive action that can be reversed with mm -hmm. a change in administration, but mm -hmm. it's a great concept, a great idea. Well, there is. There now, is I would like to suggest that we should uh, get Congress to do exactly the same thing. Exactly. And the state legislature to do exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. And the Solano County <laughs> Board of uh, Supervisors to do the exact same thing, as well will as the Dixon City Council. As will you promise, that as a you candidate, will. that you will go back and repeal <coughs> two laws for every new law passed in Dixon? And if you are elected to the Solano County Board of Supervisors, the same thing at the county level. Absolutely. In fact, just last night we had a city council meeting. Uh, and unfortunately, I was not able to get the rest of the council on board. They're uh, pretty stubborn in their ways. Um, but Shocked it was a proposal that would have required uh, the city council to, every 10 years after the census, review all of Title 18, which is their land use and zoning code. Now, it also happens to be the largest section of code uh, that we have in Dixon. It's 280 pages long and has rules for everything from rolling mills to carriage manufacturers to uh, anything from the last century. It hasn't been updated in forever. Carriage as in horse and buggy? Horse and buggy mm. manufacturing. I thought you perhaps, 
upright carriage. You must walk this way. <laughs> walk this way. Yeah. My mother used to, you know, get on me about my posture, but. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's. Watch it's, out when you visit Solano County. Yes. They'll tell you, stand up straight, young man. <laughs> oh, they're gonna come after me if they start doing that. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Slouching when I'm driving, but now, <laughs> um, it, it's what I want to see is a a complete scale down of. All the regulations that we have. Solano County has one of the longest, um, longest health codes in the state of California. It is overbearing, and it's actually negatively affected not only our restaurants, but it's gotten to the point that uh, it's affecting our charities. We've had charity kitchens get shut down because they couldn't meet the compliance. So um, we definitely need to scale back all the rules on every level. But but Solano County, of course, because of all of those rules and regulations, is a lot healthier than the rest of California, right? Well. I, I, I wish that was the case. <laughs> Have you been to Solano County? No, I'm no. sorry. <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> but no, it, absolutely. I think this is a great idea on the federal level, and um, I really wish that it would that it would trickle down to the state and local and city city levels. So, what are the first uh, uh, laws, uh, county laws, that you would like to see uh, uh, repealed uh, in order to pass a new law? Well, for one, we have a, uh, an outright ban on cannabis production and manufacturing operations in the unincorporated areas. Now, I, I would like to see that opened up because it is a huge opportunity for jobs for our county. Uh, the sit, there are cities within Solano County who have allowed it. Um, but of course, outdoor cultivation and, and the um, agriculture industry is not going to have access to any of those opportunities. Uh, because they're outside city limits. So that's one off the bat that I would be looking at. But um, Well, they have the expertise, right? They grow stuff. Exactly. exactly. They grow very well. <laughs> so th that's one off the bat that I would like to see taken care of. But um, across the board, the, the, the county planning commission, and yet the county actually has its own planning commission in addition to the city planning commissions. I'm shocked by that. <laughs> the, the county do they agree with each other? No. No. Of course not. Sorry, I, I took your punchline. <laughs> no, you could predict that one, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, the the county planning code is is equally long to the city of Dixon's planning code and has not been updated recently. Uh, and so you see the exact same problems being, you know, across the board. People don't understand what's legal and illegal because you have amendments that are tacked on to the end of the code that apply to sections at the beginning of the code. That means that Essentially, if you want to do business in Solano County or if you want to do business in the city of Dixon, you need to have your own lawyer. Who reads the entire... Uh, and comes up with their own yeah. interpretation. Yeah. Exactly. And then you need to compare the lawyer's interpretation... Well, there was a guy that wrote a, a book, Every, you know, Everybody's a Felon, and uh, that's the show. We'll see you again next week. Yeah, same, same place. Good Three, show, three felonies a day. That was the name of the book. Yeah. Well, don't <laughs>